Look at this. Look at what we're trying out today, an M5 CS. I've never been up close to one before. Pretty rare car built in 2021. This one is pretty stunning and we're going to get a full tour by Jordan, who's yeah. right here. Yeah. How are you? I'm Let's good. Give us and a you... little fist bump. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for showing us the car. This is a car that you used to, you and Ashkarz exactly. as a collection, yeah. used to own and you have since sold, but you gave your own little touches to the exactly. car, right? The artistic touch always on our cars, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you're with me today to show me around um, what is a pretty stunning car. I mean, M5 CS, so made in 2021, 635 horsepower stock, 750 Newton meters, but this one has been, yeah. Yeah, modified, so slightly yeah. improved Some and modified, modified, right? Yeah. Uh, firstly, aesthetically, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. So you've, uh, well, the, the green paint is the standard paint, the matte green, and then the gold wheels also. So there were a couple different colors you could order this in, right? So yeah. there's green, gray. Yeah, exactly, you have this green matte, you have gray matte, and as well a gloss gray. A gloss yeah. gray, okay, amazing. Well, little details that you've done, which I love, are for example, you've added the gold on the BMW logos to match with the, uh, with the rims and the calipers, which are also gold. Um, slightly different color of gold, but these show that they're the uh, carbon ceramics. There weren't many options you could get on the CS. You could change the color, and that was you know pretty much it. Apart from that, it came fully optioned for 200,000 euros yeah. as, the, as the price. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's just like a more track focused version of the M5. Now you took it even one step further with a couple other modifications, which we can show the first of which is right here with the Akrapovic exhaust. Now there's even more going on. We'll lift yeah, the hood inside, to show yeah. you, when you when you see, but this makes an unbelievable sound. So we're gonna show a little clip right now. So yeah, as you heard, it sounds pretty crazy. Um, and then we always have the H cars, little signature, which is always hiding somewhere around one of your yeah. cars. <laughs> Easy way to recognize. If yeah. you know, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The carbon fiber uh, little winglet right here, which goes with the carbon fiber um, roof. This is all standard CS stuff, as are these beautiful rims. And then, shall we lift the hood and see what's yeah. under the hood? Yeah, let's go. Um, while you do that, I'm also just going to show on the interior here. So first of all, all still finished in leather. So whilst it is a track-focused version, it is still pretty luxurious. However, it's a four-seater. It's not a five-seater. You have these pretty unreal bucket seats in the back, which go with the bucket seats in the front. This is so cool, man. Like, look at this. It looks awesome back here. I mean, if ever you were hoping to bring a fifth passenger with you, no luck in this one, but the fact that you've got bucket seats in the rear is epic. You've got Alcantara, leather, red stitching, the tickle-friendly seats, which you have also in the, uh, in the M3. And yeah, you can still adjust, see? I mean, you've even got the dual zone uh, climate control in the rear. But let's go see that engine. Because stock, it's already a beast. But then now, hidden under this pretty cool carbon fiber hood, you look at this, all carbon fiber with the M5 CS right there, you have this pretty outrageous, um, yeah, new, well, slightly new engine. So this is all stock, right? Uh, yeah. With the carbon fiber engine cover. And so it's the V8, uh, yeah, twin exactly. turbo V8. And we just had those air intakes from Eventuri. Looks yeah, these are so amazing, right? cool. They look like they could be stock. A little extra something, something. You've also done downpipes. Downpipe. You've left the filters. Though. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We kept this. So you, like this, you have more power. Yeah. But still not that much, you know, sound. But yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. I guess for me, it's perfect. Yeah, well, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah. the cool thing about this is if you look around it, you can tell some subtle differences, but yeah. uh, it, it's not like too over the exactly, top, right? Yeah. It's still exactly. true to what the original concept of this exactly. car was. It should be almost like this stock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I agree with you. you. I agree with you. How much power do we have now, though? Now, 765 horsepower oh my God. and 1,000 torque. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a beast. We're going to go drive it in a little bit, but this is an absolute animal. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's check out the, the rest of the interior. Um, 
is that closed properly? There we go. So on the interior, it still remains very luxurious, doesn't it? So yeah, it's still very true. much a five series. Um, so you still got all of your leather as we saw behind. This I think is genius what you've done here. So you've put like a cover yeah, to protect. Like, like a socks, you know what I mean? Yeah. But made it's, just for this car. Look at this, to protect because these get used. If you've watched my year review with the M3 Touring, it's one of the things I spoke about is that you need to protect this so much and it very quickly gets used. So having a little sock to protect it is awesome. There's all sorts of nice stuff going around here, like the red details. That is Alcantara. The roof lining is Alcantara. You have, I can't, I don't know if you can see it on this video, but you have the outline of the Nürburgring on the seats. Alcantara steering wheel, so that's standard CS stuff. If I hop in, look at this. Your 12 o'clock marker is like in perforated Alcantara, the red leather behind it. It's a really nice touch. Man, this is beautiful in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They've it done is. such a good job at keeping it. So you're aware that it's a CS, so you have the CS here. But then we've got, so obviously, the uh, fully digital dash. We've got, so it's the dual screen, the older system, so it's not the new system. But this is actually almost more intuitive, this system, yeah. because you have still buttons for some of the major stuff. I, I wasn't aware that in the this generation, Francis, you had this little screen for your heated seats and your aircon controls and stuff like that. So that, that's quite nice. And reminds you you're in a, a five series. And then the rest is all the typical um, M stuff. Oh, you've even done the logo here. Yeah. That's it cool. It goes to details always. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. Yeah. And then obviously carbon fiber everywhere. So as there weren't many options, this is, this is what the CSs were, were like, basically. Let's go for a drive. Let's go. Cool. All right, here we go. Start up. Hello. Hello, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again, gonna put this here. And then, so, yeah, standard five series stuff. So we're in normal mode, right. Let's start in completely normal comfort. Oh, is there someone coming in here? Looks like it, we gotta go, we gotta go. All right, so this is a five series. So what's it like, wow, it's very relaxing to drive. We've just driven it here. And as soon as you get in, you're aware still that you're in a five series. I just need to redo my here. Feel free to interrupt me to tell me where to go. Uh, maybe here we go right. Yeah, let's go on the right. Let's side. go right. All right. So yeah, you're aware that you're still in a five series. So everything feels very luxurious. And honestly, it's comfortable. The suspension's, yeah, it's hard. It's not a luxurious five series, but it's actually not quite as skateboard-like and as brutal as I thought it may be. Um, honestly, it feels, yeah, I mean, you could do some pretty long trips in these. The, yeah. the carbon seats, apart from being tricky to get in and out of, are actually really not that bad. I mean, it is a pretty crazy concept to have a, such a big kind of comfy car with bucket seats and carbon everywhere and everything. It's one of those cars that actually doesn't make any sense, but you kind of love it for it. It's kind of cool that cars like this exist. Now, I think that's enough of the comfy, cozy driving. So I press the M2 and then if I flick it, okay, we're already in manual mode. So yeah, this is where it kind of wakes up a little bit. You do have an exhaust button down here, but that doesn't actually open the valves. All that does is it allows it to do like pops and bangs. But when you go into the sport modes, that's when the valves and everything kind of properly open up. It feels cool in here. Yeah, it feels good. It feels really nice. It feels very luxurious. Ooh, but now I don't know if you can hear it with the microphones that we have on, but suddenly you get burbles and you're much more aware. I was passenger in the car earlier of what you have between your hands when you're driving, because you feel quite a few of the vibrations uh, through the steering wheel, through these seats. And, you, and even though it feels comfy and easy to cruise around in, and it actually doesn't feel as big as like a, a, an RS6 does, I feel. I yeah. mean, I know it is probably, it's definitely in the same kind of range. Um, yeah, let's do it over there, yeah. Definitely in the same kind of size range, 
but for some reason it, it feels slightly more maybe it's because I'm used to the M3 touring that I feel a bit more at home we're in the countryside we've tried to find some roads where you're never going to be able to really open the taps and something like this properly on the open road but this feels like somewhere where we can at least go slightly fast but there are a lot of people around Now, one thing, and I said this about my M3, these paddles, they look great, but they feel somewhat plasticky. And in a car that costs around 200,000 euros, I don't know, it just doesn't feel quite up to par. The steering wheel feels really nice. And then everything you've got in front of you is pretty luxurious feeling. But the amazing thing is the amount of torque that you have. Oh, we're gonna break because there's a lot of people around. Just a little acceleration like that. I mean, I literally just bent my big toe and all of a sudden you're going, <laughs> you're going at like warp speed. It's insane that a car this big, this kind of heavy, this, I don't know, like luxurious can do what this thing does. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I mean, it's violent. And you hear your, it's not like, uh, if, if it was like a full without the cats and everything yeah. and you could hear the turbo like crazy but you're still aware of those turbos aren't you yeah it sounds really cool you get those pops and bangs and genuinely just feel so fast I mean over 700 horsepower on the kind of roads that we're on um, you just can't really get anywhere near the limits of what this thing can do we have this scooter is he letting us by yes okay Oh my God, <laughs> I'm literally just having to do tiny little accelerations because or else we'll be going way too fast. The brake pedal is really nice and communicative. Often on these kind of big ceramic brakes, it's hard to judge. It feels like, you know, all of a sudden you'll get all of the braking power. And then apart from that, it's kind of disconnected and you're not quite aware of where it is. This feels very precise. Yeah. You know exactly what you're doing as soon as you hop into it. And it's got that kind of BMW M precision feeling as soon as you whack, whack it into the M2 settings. The steering, I will say, does feel slightly dead. Um, you're well aware of the fact that it's uh, an electric steering rack. Uh, but there are other cars, like I said in my M3 Touring video, that have an electric steering rack, rack that somehow managed to make it feel slightly more alive and communicative. Oh my God. <laughs> what? What? It's, it is literally like a luxury bus with a rocket engine strapped yeah, to it. Crazy car. It's insane. And it sounds like we were saying in French earlier, it sounds like a dinosaur that's having some trouble digesting its dinner yeah. is, the, is the best way to describe the sound of this thing. We can give it a little acceleration here. I mean, we're in winter tires as well. And... Oh! <laughs> yeah, it wants to go, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. It really wants to go. Oh my God. Yeah, you're definitely aware that this is a car that you need to be, you need to respect it basically yeah, yeah. because it is going to, oh. and with the torque, you have access to the power so quickly. Okay, that warp speed. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Look at that. In third and all of a sudden, wow, wow, wow. We could do that all day. <laughs> this thing is nuts. <laughs> oh, the turbos. That's, that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> Gearbox obviously feels really good. I mean, it just feels like a different alternative as well to, a, to an RS6. And somehow also just feels slightly more engaging than an RS6. RS6 is very impressive, like motorway car or anything, but this feels like you could actually have fun on track. I mean, it's kind of a random car, weird car, because, you know, it's still a big, heavy car. So is it really what you'll take on track? But if you end up on track, yeah, I mean, it's got a l plenty of grip, even with the winter tires. What a machine. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. 
For you having sold this car and now being back in it must be a weird feeling. It's weird, but that's nice because we keep um, maintaining it. Yeah, Therefore, okay. that's, that's all right. But yeah, any, anyway, I love all of this kind of dream because it keeps like living with someone else. Yeah. But we're still modifying all of this stuff. So uh, it's so great to see it. Uh, I mean, to be honest, this feels like it could all be stock. I mean, the, the speed, maybe yeah. not, but the sound, it doesn't sound so crazy that you're like, oh my God, this is almost like embarrassingly loud. I guess what we did, it's one of the perfect, um, how to say, combination, yeah. you know what I mean? Because we still have also downpipe, we have more uh, power for sure, but still not that crazy like most of uh, M motorsport yeah, exactly. car, like M2, M3, M4, which goes crazy with sound. Yeah. Even burpers, like a pop and span. Honestly, they're, they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. They could be stock. I mean, listen, if I now lift off, <laughs> yeah, but still nice, and it's not like that crazy. Yeah. Where you do this, and even uh, 200 meters uh, away, you still hear it. You know what I mean? It's, still... it's like this is the classy, modified businessman who's in a hurry car. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really like it. I I really really like this. Thank you for letting me drive it. I mean, I know it's just a, a short drive that mm -hmm. we're able to do in this, but yeah, what a machine. Honestly, I'd, I'd never seen one before, let alone being able to, you know, look around one, get in one and everything. But yeah, thanks for letting me have a go in this. I hope you enjoyed this little POV drive, Jordan. Thank yes. you very much. Cheers. We'll, I'll put your um, information down below so that people can go follow you and see all the different things that you're doing on various different cars. Very tasteful modifications and eye for detail. Um, but, oh, look at this. Lotus Evora and a 911. We do our last little. Why, <laughs> I mean, and that was from like 1500 RPM. Nuts, guys. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye bye.